In today's video, I'm answering your top questions on the Google Pixel 9 Pro. Let's get right into it. Okay, friends, I just want to start this video off by saying a big thank you for all of your support and love on my last two videos for the Google Pixel 9 Pro. Those are my best performing videos ever on the channel and I've been on YouTube for several years so I just appreciate you showing up watching the videos commenting and being generally really fantastic supportive people in the comments because with those amount of views I really thought that I was going to get a ton of hate comments especially as me not being a full-fledged formal tech reviewer but 99% of the comments were really positive and I just appreciate that so much so thank you once again for being here and being part of the community welcome if you are new and another thing I am filming this video using the Google Pixel 9 Pro so you can get an example right as you're watching this video I am experimenting with the settings so what I have the settings on right now for the video is 4k at 60 frames I know you can film in 8k but it was being kind of finicky and it was being it was filming super zoomed in and it was very, very zoomed in. So I don't know if I can do that for YouTube videos, but more to come. Like I said, I'm going to be doing more pixel content on the channel a lot more because in this video, while I'm going to be answering your top five questions that I got from the previous two videos that you sent, I did get a lot more than five questions. And I think I'm going to do full fledged videos on the ones that I missed. Also, if you have any additional questions after watching this video, leave them down below and I will either answer them in real time, I will do shorts or I'll do full fledged videos on them or I'll do a roundup Q&A like this. But let's jump into the questions. Uh, the first question I kind of expected because I did name drop this, but have you ever had an iPhone? Um, yes, with a question mark. Um, I, I've never used an iPhone for daily general use. I've never had an iPhone as my personal phone ever. Um, but I did have an iPhone for six months or so, I think four or five years ago for work related things. I think I have the phone actually. Yeah, here it is. This is the iPhone that I used. Again, I got it four or five years ago and it was older at the time. It wasn't a new model at the time and I only got it for work purposes. I used it for six months and I, it did not feel useful to me, to be honest. I ended up going back to my Pixel phone at the time more often than picking up this phone. And so after the six months, I kind of just, you know, had it in my junk drawer and that's why I still have it. It's literally not been touched. And this case is cracking and breaking apart because it's just been sitting around. But this is what the iPhone looks like. If y'all can decipher which one it is, you let me know, but I truly cannot remember. It was a good phone at the time. It was a solid phone at the time, but it really is not something that I can sustainably use as my daily phone or my regular use phone. Um, and it's also kind of hard to use a personal phone and a work phone. I don't know how people juggle multiple phones at the same time. It's, it's a lot to maintain for no reason. So yeah, this was not useful to me at all. And it was not something that could replace my Pixel phone at the time. So surely it's not going to replace a brand new Google Pixel 9 Pro. You know what I mean? But um, maybe I should do a giveaway on this if it's if it's still running. We'll, we'll see. Okay, the next question is, have you ever had any Samsung phones? And actually, yes, I was a big Samsung person a long time ago. So a little bit of backstory. I have always been an Android girl. I've always been an Android person. Obviously, I just said that I'm not into iPhones, but... When I first got into phones and I was able to have the independence of, you know, switching around, switching in and out my phones based off of my preference, I was in like high school, college years, and I was having a lot of fun experimenting with different Android phones. So I was never fully committed to a specific Android phone or model or, you know, like Samsung, Pixel, et cetera, et cetera. I would always jump around. Um, and so at that time I was getting a new Android phone every couple of months just to experiment with it. And so long story short, I'm a big Android person. I'm very willing to experiment with Android phones. And then I fell into Samsung Galaxy phones at the time. I had Samsung Galaxy phones and I kept getting the newer models all the way up until the seven. So I had like the first one all the way up to the seven. And then I think at the time the seven 
and the 8 maybe was like the same time frame as when the first Google Pixel was coming out and I was actually looking for a change from the Samsung Galaxy phones because after, at least back in the day after a few months, after six or so months of using the Samsung Galaxy phones, they would start to get buggy. They would start to slow down in performance and lag. And I was getting kind of sick and tired of it. So I was looking for a change. And of course, perfect timing, the Google Pixel first phone came out and I decided to go with that one because it aligned with all of my interests. As you all know, I've talked about why I love Google Pixel phones in general. So yeah, that's when I switched over to the Google Pixel phones. And then I've been using... Google Pixel phones ever since. I've been getting a new one every single year. But right before that, fun fact, I was a big Samsung Galaxy person. And I really did like the Samsung Galaxy 7. I think it was the one that had like a little ridge on the edge of the phone and you can kind of slightly touch or swipe on it and you can see notifications on the side of your phone. At the time, that was mind blowing. That was genius and I really liked it. Um, but yeah, the buggy, the bugginess of it at the time was just not I couldn't take it anymore. I'm sure they are fantastic and much better now. I've also seen some of the Samsung flip phones. There's one that just looks so appealing to me. I don't, I think it's the Galaxy Z or I don't know. I'm going to say it wrong, but those look really cool. Okay. Third question. Do you trade in your devices? Yes. I love trading in my devices. I highly recommend you trade in your devices if you haven't done so before and you're considering it. That is probably the main reason why I'm so quick to switch from phone to phone every single year. It saves me so much money. Um, so basically what I do is when I go to the Google store, when the new Pixel phone comes out, I go into like checking out and there are a list of prompts that the website will ask you about your current phone like the model, the condition of it, etc. And then it will give you a trade in value and it will apply that trade in value to your new phone. So of course you all know, I have the latest Google Pixel phones always whenever I'm doing a trade in. And contrary to my YouTube short that went pretty viral, um, I do take good care of my phones. I generally don't drop them or scratch them or anything like that. I know that's hard to believe after seeing that short, but I really do. <laughs> so I end up getting like the highest trade in value every single time. Of course, that is dependent on them re actually receiving the device and then assessing it and then sending the, the credit in. But generally speaking, I get like almost half or more than half of the phone off in that way. And it just credits towards my brand new phone. So I end up getting the phones at like half the price. And I also always get the pre-order incentives whenever I get the phones because I always tend to pre-order them. As you all know, I'm like staying on top of it and always pre-ordering it the day that it launches. So it ends up being a really, really big discount to get the brand new latest phone. So it's always worth it to me and I highly recommend you you consider that if you haven't considered it before. It's also really easy to do. They send the trade-in box, at least for the Google Pixel phones through the Google store. It's such a seamless process. They send you everything. They tell you what to do. You drop it off at UPS. It's done. Next question. Do you get the Pixel watches? Yes. I have a love-hate relationship with the Pixel watches. I'm not going to lie. As you all know, I went through my experience with the first watch and the second watch on this channel. So you can check those videos out if you're interested. But I got the Google Pixel Watch 1, the very first one, the first of its kind, and I didn't love it. I love it for so many reasons. I love that it's integrated with the Google Pixel phones, of course. I love that it gives me the same experience as my phone. I love the design of it. There's so many things. But the biggest issue that I had with the Google Pixel Watch 1 is that the battery was horrid. It's, it's so bad and I cannot sugarcoat it. It's actually bad and I know people are going to contest me on that. I don't care. I've had a horrible experience with it. It would only last a couple of hours, maybe half a day um, at its best. And I would still charge it in the beginning of the day. So really bad experience with that, mainly solely because of the battery. So when I went to pre-order my Google Pixel 8 Pro, there was an incentive at the Google store where you can get the Google Pixel Watch 2 for free. Um, they probably realized that the first watch was a flop. This is just my speculation. And so they were like, hey, hey, just like we'll upgrade you to the newer one because we know this one's better for free. So that's how I ended up getting the Google Pixel Watch 2. Um, and the battery is significantly better. It's not fantastic. 
It's not great, but it is significantly better than the first one. And so I love the watch for all of the other things that I mentioned, plus the battery is better now. So this is my Google Pixel Watch 2. It is not on the standard band right now because during my work day I, or work week, I put on this stretchy band so that I can put it on my ankle so that when I'm on my walking pad, I can still accurately track my steps. But generally speaking, like when I'm not doing that, it's on the regular band and the band looks really nice. And you can probably see me on the screen right now because I'm using the watch as a viewfinder, a huge perk that I learned from one of y'all in the comments that I can use my watch as a viewfinder when I'm filming using the Google Pixel phones. Incredible thing. But um, yeah, I do, long story short, use the Google Pixel watches. And I do recommend the second one. I don't know anything about the third one because I am fine with sticking with the second one, especially because I got it for free. Don't want to pay any more money to get another one, given my experience thus far. Who knows what will happen in the future though. Okay, and then the last question is, how does the Google Pixel 9 Pro compare to the Google Pixel 8 Pro? Now, let me just put a disclaimer here that I am not a full-fledged tech reviewer. I am not, you know, jumping on things super fast. I am using the phone daily as my general phone and I'm using it realistically. I'm using it practically as a daily user and I'm just sharing my experience with the phones as I use it and answering your questions as I use it. That's the general consensus of what my videos are when I talk about Google Pixel devices. Um, so I'm not going to be super fast when it comes to giving you guys feedback and, you know, formal comparisons, formal reviews, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And I did actually hear feedback from y'all when I did my pros and cons for the Google Pixel 8 Pro video that you appreciate that. You appreciate that I sit with the phone for six months and then come out with a review. So I'm glad that you acknowledge that, you know, I am not... I'm not one of those big tech reviewers. If you want fast, quick comparisons, quick reviews, those who are doing this full time, I highly recommend Your Average Consumer. I really like him. I think for a high-end tech reviewer, he's still pretty relatable. And yeah, I like him. Gender's great. So recommend him if you want some more content on that or anybody in that space, to be honest with you. But for me, I've only had this phone for a week now. And so my comparisons to the Google Pixel 8 Pro right now are very minimal at this given moment. I still need to sit with the phone and use it. And sometimes I don't even get to pick up the phone as much as I want to because I'm, I'm busy working, doing other things. But what I have right now is one, the biggest thing, the hardware. The Google Pixel 8 Pro is gigantic in comparison to the Google Pixel 9. Of course, you all know I have the small one, not the XL. So the comparison is is massive. This Google Pixel 9 Pro is tiny in comparison. Um, another thing with the hardware, this one feels a little bit more luxe. It feels a, a bit more premium, if that makes sense. It feels heavy, it has a weight to it, and it has a feel to it with the rounded edges and like the, the shiny edges that feels very premium in comparison to the Google Pixel 8 Pro. I did pick up the Google Pixel 8 Pro recently and it did feel like it had that weight and it had that luxe feeling too, but this one feels a little bit more premium, if that makes sense. I don't know how to distinguish that any more than I have, but people in the comments have agreed with me. I'm glad I'm not the only one that you know, said that. I'm, I'm not making it up. Another thing, the Google Pixel 8 Pro never had issues with overheating. The Google Pixel 9 Pro, my phone is getting warm, especially when I film, especially when I take pictures. Um, I actually went into the settings and there was a whole section where it was like a, um, it, was not, it was like a quiz questionnaire prompt kind of thing in the settings that was asking me questions about why my phone could possibly be warming up right now. And it offered solutions. I don't know if that's like gimmicky or not because I clicked through the prompts and they were like, your phone is at optimization. Like you have all of the settings set up so it's optimized to not overheat or drain the battery, which was helpful that I have the proper settings set up, but my phone was still warm. So I, I don't know how helpful that setting is gonna be, but I did notice that setting in this phone. 
Whereas I guess maybe the, that setting could have been the 8 Pro as well, but I just never had to look for it because the 8 Pro never heated up like that. But that's just another thing that I've noticed. And then the camera, again, very, very initial. I have not been able to play with the settings as much as I would like. So stay tuned for more updates on the camera. You all know the camera is the most important thing to me but I haven't been seeing a major difference in quality between my 8 Pro photos and my 9 Pro photos. I'm seeing a slight difference in terms of video quality, but it's not substantial. And that kind of concerns me because I bought this phone with the hopes that my photo and video quality will get vastly, vastly better as the years go on. And I'm not seeing a huge step up from one phone to the next. Again, I need to play more with the settings. So that's just an initial reaction. I'm sure after I do this video, it goes up and people start like sending me hate comments. I'm going to find all of the settings and then it's going to be a fantastic experience. But for now, I just wanted to make note of that for people, especially for people who are just grabbing the phone out of the box and getting straight into it instead of like, you know, having a good sit down time to fix every single setting. Settings can't take a long time, okay? And realistically speaking, I can't get to all of the settings all the time, okay? But um, yeah, those are some initial comparisons. I hope that was interesting, but that was the last question actually. So if you have any other questions about the Google Pixel 9 phones or um, anything, anything in terms of the Pixel phones or something related, um, leave them down below. I am more than happy to answer them in real time. Like I'll just respond to you in the comment section or I will take a couple of them into a cluster like I did here and do a Q&A video or I will do a full-fledged video on one of your questions. Like I said, I didn't get to every single question and that is on purpose because some of the questions were really fantastic and I want to turn them into full length videos. So stay tuned, lots of pixel content coming your way, don't you worry. And if there's any video requests you have in particular for the Google Pixel 9 Pro, let me know as well. But thank you so, so much for hanging out with me today. I, I'm i just so appreciative of all of the support recently for the Pixel videos. I, I know these are my top performing videos on the channel, but y'all really showed up for the last two. So thank you once again, I appreciate you and I will talk to you in next week's video. Walking in the